Okay, so there are a lot of misguided people on the internet who think the RX 480 is better than the GTX 980 or even the GTX 1070. This video is going to address a few things. So, some people think the RX 480 is better than the GTX 980 because of the amount of teraflops it has. In all honesty, it's more to reassure their confirmation bias than it is to legitimately make an accurate guess. I get it, I've been there. Most people have, but it's simply wishful thinking. The reason why this thinking is flawed is because teraflops alone won't tell you the performance of a card, not even a decent approximation when you compare AMD cards with Nvidia cards. If that were the case, the R9 280X would perform similarly to the GTX 970. You'd have to be crazy biased to believe that's true though. Also, its price point is just a bit too low to be competing at that performance range. I get that this is a new card and a new architecture and whatnot, but it's literally half the cost of a GTX 980. Again, it's more wishful thinking than it is a realistic guess. Don't worry though, as impossible as it is to tell a really accurate performance range for an unreleased card, I'll be using the specs they gave to give a more realistic approximate in how the RX 480 will perform. First, the specs. We'll be comparing these with AMD cards because their architecture is more likely to be similar to Polaris than Nvidia architectures. Greater than 5 teraflops. A common estimate for that is 5.5 teraflops due to values of things like the TDP and transistor sizes. That's between the R9 390 and 390X. The common guess for stream processors is 2304 stream processors. We'll be using that as our guess. That's between the 380X and the 390. The core clock speed I found was 1266 MHz. Not sure if that's overclocked or not, but let's assume it's not. This is very impressive considering it's above all the other AMD cards. Keep in mind that although this is impressive, it doesn't determine performance alone. The Fury X is significantly better than the R9 390X by a large margin, even though it has a lower clock speed. Still, it's very impressive. RAM clock speed is 8 gigabits a second with a 256-bit bus width, resulting in a total of 256 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth or between the R9 380X and R9 390. So, to summarize, based off the information we now have, teraflop amount is between the R9 390 and R9 390X. Stream processor amount is between the R9 380X and the R9 390. The memory bandwidth is between the R9 380X and the R9 390. The core clock speed is higher than all the rest. Due to these specs, it'd be more safe to approximate its performance as being around the R9 390 and GTX 970. I would predict that it's slightly higher than those two because although teraflop amount doesn't tell the whole story, it does usually give a basic idea within the same brand. And as many overclockers know, that 200 megahertz, assuming it's stock, won't make up enough of a difference to make it better than the 980. The GTX 980 is, although approximated, between the R9 390X and R9 Fury in terms of performance generally closer to the R9 390X though. In conclusion, considering the price of the RX 480, literally half the price of the GTX 980, it's no wonder that it doesn't belong in the same performance range, yet people are still speculating that it'll be around the same performance or even similar to the 1070, which remember, is better than both the 980 and 980 Ti. This card at $200 is still very impressive. Assuming the worst, it'll likely be slightly worse than the 390 and GTX 970, which are both still above $275 at the very least. Even if the RX 480 is worse than these two, it's still a very impressive bargain at only $200. Favor Nvidia, favor AMD, I don't care. Both are great. But holding on to your confirmation bias for one brand will only hurt us as tech geeks, as you're spreading misinformation. This looks to be a great card at a great price, so please just be happy about that.